Up next, we have Jeff Daly of the Michigan Dailies. Um, he will be talking about podcasting. Uh, Jeff is a Marine veteran and a member of Post 43 in Hollywood. Jeff was born in Rochester, New York, as was I, which we found out recently. Um, Jeff was raised in Kalamazoo, Michigan, now resides in West Hollywood, California. Along the way, uh, he spent time in the Marines, as I said, then back to Michigan, uh, where he attended Cal Kalamazoo College for economics and poli sci. While in college, Jeff worked in sales and sales management, managed a campaign for an incumbent congressman, and even ran for office himself. Didn't win. Didn't win. After graduation, Jeff moved to Chicago to study at the Second City Conservatory. That education in improvisation, writing, and performing helped, sh helped shape Jeff's outlook on life and added to his problem-solving skill set. Jeff later took his talents to LA, where he is currently doing the LA Hustle, which includes the requisite entertainment pursuits paired with being a property manager and doing freelance social media marketing and content creation. Jeff has been busy in the American Legion. In addition to being one of the co-hosts for the Tango Alpha Lima podcast, he is currently the membership director for the Department of California. He is also first commander for his district and post and Jeff still serves on the Department Media and Communications Commission and is the Public Information Officer. Please welcome podcast co-host, among other things, Jeff Daly. That was a lot. Um, I'm just finishing my presentation here. Don't worry about that. I, I tend to be prepared. Um, I do wish Matt had gone on uh, before because I ask, how do you feel on the podcast all the time? And he hates that. So I'm going to make sure to make a, co a collection of when I say that and send it to him. I did want to finish the, the, thank the Tango Alpha Lima plug. It was Henry's brainchild, actually. And uh, I was just brought on to, because I have a face for audio. So he brought me on to do uh, to be a host on that. And currently right now we're doing the 9-11-2020s, 20 stories leading up from 20 perspectives, leading up to the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It's really some really good ones. This week is highlighted by Jessica Lynch. So that's a pretty great interview that we have uh, this week. So please listen to that. And that's one of the first things that I would say as well is when you're learning how to do something, watch what other people, watch how other people do it. So listening to our podcast can tell you all kinds of things to do and not to do because we screw up all the time. So uh, that's part of our charm is <laughs> that we're, we're genuine and real and raw. Um, if you want to do it properly, it's been said you need to spend between five and $10,000 on equipment have uh, you know some training and broadcasting and have an old time radio voice. But the reality is now with podcasting, it's been democratized. He would probably tell me to say, <laughs> brought down to the people, because uh, I use those $5 words all the time. Uh, what you really, all you really need, and I'm gonna see who has a cell phone, a smartphone. You could literally walk out into the hallway today and start a podcast. And I'm gonna tell you how to do it for $0 and zero cents other than the phone that you have and the monthly fee that you pay for access. There's an app called Anchor. Anchor, those things that the Navy uses to keep a ship in place, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to get that Anchor app. Then your most of your microphones could get you started. You could spend a little bit of money and get a, a, a better microphone, um, but you don't. You you could start with that. And Anchor, and the beautiful thing about Anchor is this: it will help. It will it will record for you. You can record in segments. It will. It has music that you're allowed to use. You can put music underneath when you speak. When you're done, you can edit it. You can clip. You can trim your clips. And when you're finished and you've made your masterpiece, it will help you distribute. Anchor was bought by Spotify. So that means your podcast will immediately, instantly be broadcast on Spotify. With a little bit of time, it will make it to Google Groups app, I mean, Google 
Podcast, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, and the rest. So it is a one-stop, costs zero dollars and zero cents because Spotify is trying to build up their podcast, uh, the, their podcast library. So you can get all of that done, and I haven't cost you a dime yet, except for the suggestion that you upgrade your microphone. Okay, so you have that. That's that's all the easy stuff. The technical stuff is easy. You have the equipment in your pocket. You really do. You have a broadcast studio in your pocket. And right now I'm only talking about audio. I will talk a little bit about if you want to do video in a minute. Uh, but audio is a great place to start because your audience can listen while they drive, mow the lawn. Um, when other people are talking to them and they don't want to listen to them, they, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they can listen to you instead. But the real prep comes in designing in your brain what you want to communicate. Do you have subject matter that you want to cover? Now, I know everybody thinks they're an expert on and has a passion for everything, but uh, you don't. So if, if you think that you do, go reevaluate what you want to talk about. If you're doing it for your post, think about serving community, state, and nation first if you need some ideas. Uh, if your post is specific, like say you're a, a post of police officers, you, that's going to give you some different things to talk about. If you're a post in Hollywood, we're going to have some different things to talk about. But come up with your subject matter, and believe me, you won't run out of things to talk about by being by being focused. There's so much. And if you run out of things to talk about, ask somebody what their opinion is of what you should talk about. And trust me, you will have an endless list in no time. Beyond thinking about your subject matter, think about your audience. Who are you talking to? Because when you talk into a microphone for a podcast or even on TV, you're not talking to the proverbial masses. You need to think about the fact, think about talking to a specific person or small group, right? I'm, I'm, because you want to come across as genuine, personable, and as if it is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Think about that late night radio DJ. They're not talking like this for just anybody. They're talking like this for you. So you need to communicate and connect with each person as if they're the individual that you alone are speaking to. It's super important. So think about who your audience is. Other people will still listen, but in your brain, you're going to communicate better if you're talking to someone specific. And then come up with your voice. And by your voice, I don't mean the sound this, that your vocal cords are making. What your voice is, is your perspective. If you come up with what your perspective is, you can talk about anything. Now, in the podcast, that, the Tango Alpha Lima podcast, my voice are, is two things. I'm ridiculous and I rant. I can rant about anything. I can rant about that water bottle. I mean, look how small it is. Who's getting hydrated from that? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, 10 of those just to walk out of this room. I could do that all day. So if you come up with your voice, if you're sarcastic, if you're if you're academic, if you're what if you're a rah rah cheerleader, whatever your whatever your voice is, you can talk about anything, and you have that consistency. Your subject matter will change, but you have that consistency, like a magazine, the the like our magazine. You still you see the same logo every month. You expect to see a beautiful, a full color picture every month, and you see those things. Though that's the consistency, but the words change, the pictures change, but there's still some comfort and consistency. So you're going to want to have that. You're going to want to have that voice. Find you want the people to know who you are. So now you see our elements. You have to figure out who you are. Then you have to talk to a specific person, and then you have a voice and an audience, and then the content. You see how this is way more difficult than the technology. The technology should not intimidate you or scare. I have to go back to my five cent words. The, the technology should not scare you because it's easy. And if anybody wants, I would challenge everybody today to set up a podcast on Anchor and report on your experience at this convention. 
And while you're doing, and you don't have to do it today because the convention's not over, but I want you to think about when you're walking to lunch, what is my subject matter? Who am I talking to? And what's my voice? That's your three bits of homework that will get you very far in this podcasting business because I'm an expert, just ask me. Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, I've literally been doing this for two years and I'll tell you a quick story on how that started. I went to uh, a, a session that Henry was hosting and it was supposed to be younger vets and they were supposed to save the American Legion. And so I was listening to them trying to save the American Legion and all they did was complain about it. No one's going to join unless you change the logo. I was like, really? somebody actually said that, like, no one's going to change. No one's going to join unless you change the logo. And it's thinking I should ask this guy, did somebody actually say, you know, I would join, but pff, that logo, like, I, I don't think that that's ever been said to anybody ever in the history of mankind. And I sat there for 45 minutes not saying a word which if anybody knows me jared knows me <laughs> henry knows me that's a lot for me to have people say dumb things and not respond so what i said was if any of you ever came up with a solution i would have stopped what was going on and went over and hugged you thankfully nobody did so i didn't look weird and but i said that i promise that i'm going to go home and i'm going to do something that solves a problem and one of the problems was communication one of the problems was access to what we are and who, what we do and who we are. So I went home and I made my own podcast just because in California, I mean, I had dozens of people listening. It was amazing. Uh, I went to the grocery store and said, I'm a podcaster. And trust me in Los Angeles, that's everybody. So if you, so then what happened was I got a call and they said, you know, I, I asked Holly about it and she came to, when she came to LA one time, I, Holly Soria, if you don't know, she spoke earlier. And of course she gave me critique, which I don't take very well, but I did. And then uh, like a couple months later, they called and uh, said that they were starting this one. Now I was lucky because they already, they had already figured out their audience. I'm repeating things because I want you to get this. They had figured out their audience. They figured out who they were talking to and they just needed to have a collection of three voices. And Mark's voice, if, uh, how many have heard Tango Alpha Lima? And I want you to tell me if I am getting this right. Mark's voice is, he's got two parts, super nerd. And then uh, just, he's, he's pretty academic. He speaks historical, speaks in historical things. He does need a better one. We'll, we'll take that down. We'll take that down. And then Ashley is uh, feelings. And uh, so she was, she was, uh, when she goes, wow, <laughs> just wow. You know you're going to get feelings that are going to follow right away. And then I told you my voice is ridiculous and ranting. So they put together this collection of voices to speak to an audience about a subject about subject matter and it is going really well and make sure i'm not going over because if i go over you miss lunch so i have to be concise which was one of the c's that he spoke about and then took all my time <laughs> thankfully thankfully i create my things on the fly and that's another thing if, and, I, and I, I had this discussion with somebody who I was a guest on their podcast and she's, she was a guest on ours first. And, uh, and she said, I was just amazed. You guys, you guys don't even seem like you prepare at all. And that's the brand I wanna have. I wanna, I mean, I actually do prepare, I read all the articles and look stuff up, but I, I like to look like it's an effortless, con effortless conversation where I'm learning things for the first time and saying things for the first time. I don't say, you know, I read in your bio this. And I, what I say is, oh, where did you go to school? Oh, what kind of fighter jet did you fly? And then when they tell me what fighter did they fly, I'll be like, oh, I heard you were the, this is actual true story. I heard somewhere that you were the first person to manually land that jet successfully. Other people tried it. She was the first one to be able to talk about it. So that was, uh, that, that was an amazing interview, but it also shows that if you are trying to be genuine and connect with people, if you're over rehearsed, or maybe if you've heard the phrase overproduced, like we don't do the crazy wacky, we don't have sound effects. We don't play music under when we talk. 
we don't have swooshing sounds and things like that. Or when we go into rapid fire, no one goes rapid fire. Although maybe that would be cool. Um, we do have the commercials. Yep. And we do have commercials going in there too, but the content is not overproduced. So again, you don't have to feel intimidated. Like you have to put all this razzle dazzle in. If you just talk to that person who in, who's in your brain as your audience and you stick to your subject matter and you speak to it with your voice, you will have a podcast. Now, had I thought ahead, what I would have done is see, ugh, I would have just recorded what I just did. And just, this could have been a podcast. I, oh, we do have it recorded. So I could publish that. I won't publish it on legions. I'll do it on my one that's back at home, but I, I will publish this as a podcast to just to show that you talking and I have an audience. I had a voice and it has subject matter. This is very specific subject matter. I couldn't talk about how to make a podcast every day, but that's all it is. So I'm just curious now if anybody, I saw somebody raise their hand, she already downloaded Anchor. Is anybody, who's seriously considering making a podcast? Or are you just here because uh, the important stuff was early and you didn't want to be rude and walk out? So I, I hope that I hope that you will do it. If you want to send it to Jeff at post43.org, I will subscribe. Um, and, and maybe and I may submit an article about people who are championing this newish, it's not that new anymore. It's new to the Legion, but it's uh, this newish way of communicating and getting the word out to not only your members, you have you have uh, you have your members to speak to, and you have an external audience to speak to, which is potential members and your communities. So if you do that and you do start one, you can send it to Jeff at post43.org. I will not critique it in front of you. I'll do it behind your back and talk all kinds of smack, but I will rebroadcast and make sure that you at least start out with a smaller audience. And look at that, I have two minutes to go. And if you have any questions, let me know. Boom. Yes, sir. That was a Marine Corps joke, apparently. <laughs> But I, one thing I want to say to everybody, and, and, and Henry, don't do it. Um, I think you underestimate the value of a great microphone. Uh, I say that because uh, I obviously, you know, have am a hard ear. And, and when there's so many podcasts that I've subscribed to, and then I've unsubscribed to quit following, because it, I couldn't hear them. You know, unless I was at home, in my office with, with nothing running, I couldn't hear him. Uh, and so that's where I want to emphasize the people in the microphone. And um, I, I would know, agree with you. I know with, with you, that I hear a lot of your background echo. Oh, he um, thinks you're messy. I know, you've heard that before, Henry. We've talked about it. It's not a point. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I understand that. But I, I want to emphasize the and I wouldn't disagree with that. Is uh, even in filmmaking, they always say uh, an audience will forgive bad video way easier than they will forgive bad audio. Well, and you can fix videos. Well, you can. Audio really you there are some audio engineers that would uh, argue with you, but you, yeah. you you can work on the the audio as well. But you're not going to be audio engineers. So, but the microphones and phones. And if you're in a quiet space, uh, you can get the job done and Anchor can actually help you uh, enhance it a little bit. And so, and I, I didn't really have chance um, because of Matt before me, but I would say that uh, on our podcast, we're, because we're video, we record with Zoom and then we extract the audio. It sounds way more difficult than it is. And I don't have time to, I don't have time to go step by step through that today because you need to go to lunch. But I, I, I do think uh, that might be another article that we could write. And I, I'm trying to remember if I wrote, uh, I wrote this information in the PR toolkit. Is that just for Telma? 
It's for everybody. Oh, it's for everybody. The PR toolkit that's coming out. So you'll be able to read this. And I probably said it smarter that way. Anyway, so you you can find this information again in the PR toolkit when that's released. And uh, perhaps if the video podcast isn't in there, I, I will write an article about that as well. Um, and that's it. I need to go eat. So I'll well, hand it over to Henry.